गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडेज टॉपिक इज कल्टिवेशन ऑफ नॉल खॉल साइंटिफिकली नॉल खॉल इज ब्रेसिका लोरेशिया वराइटी गैंजिलॉइड्स इज नोन बाई मैनी नेम्स इन इंडिया इट इज़ पॉपुलर इन कश्मीर वेस्ट बंगाल महाराष्ट्र असम उत्तर प्रदेश पंजाब एंड सम पार्ट्स ऑफ साउथ इंडिया बट इट इज़ नॉट कल्टिवेटेड कमर्शली इट इज़ करेक्टराइज बाई द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ नॉब ट्यूबर विच अराइजेज फ्राम अ थिकनिंग ऑफ द स्टेम टिश्यू एब ऑफ द कॉटेलीडेंस द फ्लसी टर्निप लाइक इनलॉर्जमेंट ऑफ द स्टेम डिवलप्स इंटायरली एब ऑफ द ग्राउंड दिस नॉब इज हार्वेस्टेड फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन एज रा आर कुकड वेजिटेबल दो इन सम पार्ट्स यंग लिप्स आर ऑल्सो यूज क्लाइमेट एंड सॉइल फॉर नॉल खॉल नॉल खॉल थ्राइव वेस्ट इन अ रिलेटिवली कूल मॉइस्ट क्लाइमेट In temperate regions, the early varieties are sensitive to early bolting, but under subtropical conditions. This problem is not much since the vernalization effect of low night temperature is counteracted by high temperatures during the day, with the result that mean temperature hardly goes below 10 degrees centigrade. The high temperature after planting delays the bolting of plants. that have been vernalized on the seed bed it grows well with a monthly average temperatures of 15 to 20 degree centigrade maximum and minimum average being 24 degree centigrade and 4.5 degree centigrade in late varieties low temperatures doesn't have stimulating effect on bolting in early stages it is vernalized in the later stages only as other annual cold crops when the plant has made some growth it can be withstand steam cold and frost better than other cool season crops varieties that are susceptible to bolting like a juvenile phase and become generate to without producing knobs if exposed after germination to low temperature when the low temperatures occurs at the knob formation stage the round and flat round varieties produce long oval shaped knobs the low temperatures are frost conditions sometimes develop the anthocyanin pigment on knobs are plant parts these pigments are intensified if there is lack of nitrogen and phosphorus in soil deteriorating the quality of knobs especially of green types knoll coal can be grown on all types of soils it prefers wider soils for its growth and development without any interference developed by the soils A soil rich in manures and fertilizers produces excellent knobs. Sandy loam is ideal for early crop and clay or silt loam for higher yield and late crop. It doesn't grow well in highly acidic soil. The optimum pH should be in the range of 5.5 to 6.8. It is ideal pH for cultivation of all type of vegetation. Varieties of knoll coal. Some of the promising varieties available in India Our Sutton's earliest purple, Sutton, Golith White, Sadashiv, Early White Biana, King of the Market, and Early Purple Biana. <coughs> Although research stations and some private seed companies are engaged in testing and maintenance of varieties, no serious attempt has been made for the improvement of the crop, as the available introductions are well suited to our conditions. The recommended varieties are. King of North it has a plant height of 20 to 30 cm foliage is dark green knob flat is round leaf sheath large and bell spread over the knob it matures 60 to 65 days after transplanting in europe weissmuir forcing white and goggles forcing white are resistant to bolting and mature 30 to 45 days after planting These are early varieties characterized by the horizontal position of the lower leaves. The late varieties mature 70 to 100 days after planting. The earliest variety in this group is purple speck white goliath is late. Purple speck while goliath is late. Large green it has uh, green around large size knobs with small tops. The knobs are tender delicately flavored with white flesh. It is ready for harvesting in 75 76 days with an average yield potential of 225 to 250 quintals per hectare it has been recommended for mid and high hills of the western himalayas 
पर्पल बियाना दिस इज अबाउट वन वीक लेट देन वाइट बियाना नॉब्स आर पर्पलिस ब्लू विथ ग्रीनिस वाइट फ्लैश इट हैज पर्पल लिप्स इट रिक्वायर्स फिफ्टी फाइव टू सिक्सटी फाइव डेज फॉर नॉब फॉर्मेशन विथ स्लाइटली बेटर इल पोटेंशियल देन व्हाइट बियाना व्हाइट बियाना दिस इज एन अर्ली वेराइटी विथ ग्लोबुलर लाइट ग्रीन स्मूथ टेंडर मीडियम साइज नॉब्स हैविंग क्रीमी व्हाइट टेंडर फ्लैश विथ डेलीकेट फ्लेवर इट्स प्लांट्स आर डॉर्फ लिप्स एंड स्टेम्स आर मीडियम ग्रीन इट हैज आल पोटेंशियल ऑफ हंड्रेड फिफ्टी टू टू हंड्रेड क्विंटल पर एक्टर इट मैच्योर फिफ्टी फाइव टू सिक्सटी फाइव डेज आफ्टर ट्रांसप्लांटिंग अर्ली व्हाइट बियाना हैज डॉर्फ प्लांट्स शॉर्ट टॉप्स एंड ग्लोबुलर राउंड नॉप्स इट टेक्स फिफ्टी टू सिक्सटी डेज फॉर नाव फॉर्मेशन कल्टिवेशन आस्पेक्ट नॉल कॉल इज यूजली प्रोपोगेटेड बाई सीड द सीड रेट बींग वन टू वन पॉइंट फाइव के जी पर हेक्टेयर सीड शुड बी गिवेन अ हार्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट फिफ्टी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड फॉर हाफ एन आवर अगेंस्ट ब्लैक रॉट एंड एंड ब्लॉक रॉट एंड एप्रॉन थर्टी फाइव एट द रेट ऑफ टू ग्राम पर के जी सीड अगेंस्ट डाउनी मिल्डू बिफोर सोइंग इन डिजीज प्रोन एरियाज द सीडलिंग्स आर रेज इन द नर्सरी बेड्स अबाउट फोर टू सिक्स वीक्स ओल्ड सीडलिंग्स आर रेडी फॉर ट्रांसप्लांटिंग Generally, 60 cm wide and 2.5 cm long nursery beds are prepared. For one square meter nursery, 100 g of fertilizer mixture containing 15 g each E and P and K and 2.5 to 4 kg farmyard manure, mixed well in soil and raised nursery bed, must be prepared with 30 cm channel along with the nursery. On light and drought sensitive soils, sunken nursery beds are preferred. Acidic soils should be Limed for minimizing the seedling damage, the nursery bed should be treated with formalin 40% formaldehyde diluted in five to six parts of water. Soil is saturated with this solution, requiring five liters per square meter. Fumes are then confined by covering nursery beds with burlap or canvas or polythene for two days, and then the soil is aerated well for at least four days before sowing. The treatment can be replaced by the use of captan 0.3 percent for soil drenching. Seeds are sown in rows at a distance of 5 to 6 centimeter for ease in manual hoeing, seeds weeding and thinning. In too close spacing, the seedlings are liable to be attacked by damping off disease and become lanky. Proper spacing results in stocky and vigorous seedlings. A depth of 1.5 to 2 cm is optimum since deeper sowing delays the germination. The nursery bed is covered with grass to conserve moisture for uniform germination. It is watered as and when required with watering can. The mulch is removed just before the seed germination to control damping up. Drenching added in the spray when the seedlings growth is poor. However, excessive nitrogen results in tender and lanky plants that show poor establishment after transplanting. Seedlings are hardened in the nursery by restricting the water supply for about a week before transplanting in the field to enable them to withstand the shock of transplanting. Planting in the plains of North India. Planting may be done in September, while in the milder winter regions, October is best time for planting. In the hills of northern India, seeds are sown from March to April to August. About five to six weeks old seedlings are transplanted for summer and autumn crops. <coughs> the growing of nursery in March, April needs protection from cold and frost, for which low-cost polyhouses may be used. Preparation of land is done by two to three plowings. Firstly, with soil turning plow, and after plowings, with ordinary plow tiller. Are this carrow to get the fine tilt? The beds and channels are prepared to facilitate irrigation. Transplanting of seedlings is done in the evening and are on cloudy days. The soil around the plants should be well pressed to establish contact with roots. This process should be followed by light irrigation. The dead plants should be re replaced and gaps be filled five to six days after transplanting. The transplanting is done at a closure spacing of 25 to 25 cm or 25 to 30 cm and 25 to 40 cm or 30 cm to 45 cm depending on climatic conditions and 
fertility of the soil. The yield is more in close spacing, but the size of knobs is reduced. The early varieties may be planted at closer spacing, while the late ones require wider spacing. Manuring and fertilization all called response well to manuring as it is a heavy feeder. A yield of 20 tons per hectare removes about 100 kg nitrogen, 85 kg P and 170 kg K. Excess of N may cause abundant leafy growth and a delayed crop. A split application of nitrogen is more beneficial. Half of N along with full quantity of P and K are applied at the time of transplanting. The remaining half nitrogen is applied in two equally split doses, three weeks after transplanting and the other at the knob development stage. The farmyard manure is added to soil four to six weeks before transplanting. Optimum N and K doses are necessary to get good flavored knobs. The deficiency of boron, molybdenum and nitrogen may induce physiological disorders such as browning, whiptail and buttoning. Polar application of urea 1 to 2 percent to correct the nitrogen deficiency is useful and economical. Multiplex 0 0.2 to 0.3 percent can be added in the spread to correct the general micronutrient deficiencies. However, to correct deficiencies alone, 10 to 15 kg per hectare of borax, a soil application or two sprays of 0.3 percent borax on the crop are beneficial. In highly acidic soils, molybdenum deficiency can be overcome by liming. Our soil application of ammonium molybdate at the rate of 200 to 300 gram per hectare at concentration of 0.01 to 0.1 percent. After care, steady, steady growth of, uh, is of utmost importance. Any check in the growth causes knobs to be fibrous and woody. On the other hand, too rapid growth after slow initial growth may result in cracking knobs, though a lot of varietal variation exists. The knobs may become in, in elongated in close spacing due to lack of light as in knobs growing in the shade. The production of elongated knobs may also be induced by high temperatures and excess of nitrogen. Cracking of knobs also occurs if the long dry spell is followed by moist conditions or irrigation because of increased root pressure. The entire cultural operations are performed mainly to check the weed growth to make the soil loose and to maintain proper moisture conditions. Since its root system is shallow, weighing is done to keep the crop weed free. Presence of weeds in the early stages reduces the yield due to poor growth of the plants. Timely weighings help check the weed population as soon as the weeds start appearing. Shallow weighings should be done. Once the weeds are well established, their removal disturbs the root system of plants resulting in weed growth. No sooner the soil is covered with foliage, hoeing is stopped. Hoeing during the now form development stage is discouraged and beads, if any, removed by hand. Treflon, triflorin, 0.5 liters per hectare, and semoron, desmetarin, one at the rate of 1 kg per hectare, applied before transplanting control both monocot as well as dicot beads. Use of black polythene mulch for controlling beads can also be made. Recently, the effectiveness of stamp pendimethylene at the rate of 1 to 2 kg per hectare in controlling beads has been recommended. Practice of BD side application supplemented with one or two hand weighings is useful and economical. Irrigation alcohol requires a continuous supply of moisture for uniform growth and development of knobs. First irrigation is done immediately after transplanting and thereafter irrigation is done when needed. Depending on soil and weather conditions, irrigation at 15 days interval is adequate. Heavy irrigation should be avoided. Irrigation should be applied when the moisture content of the soil has dropped below 50% of field capacity. At the time of maturity of knobs, irrigation is detrimental. Harvesting and post-harvest management. The knobs are harvested by cutting the stem just below it by a sharp knife or sickle before they are fully grown. After that, uh, they become tough and woody. The demand is fairly high uh, for knobs of a smaller size of about 5 to 8 cm diameter. In preparing the produce for the market, the root portion is removed and the plants are tied in bunches along with the tender leaves. It also marketed after removing both leaves and roots. The knobs of early varieties 
may have an average weight of 200 to 250 gram while those of late ones weigh up to 1 kg generally the yield may vary from 12 to 30 tons per hectare thank you for patience hearing